keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how the Christ had died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And then in verse 12, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they which also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Father, we thank you this morning for your blessed word. We thank you for the message that it has for us. We ask you, Heavenly Father, now to help us to rightly divide the word of God, the word that you've given to us. And Lord, we might be men and women that would not be ashamed as we stand in the marketplace of life on the morrow. Thank you, Father, for this time together. And in Jesus' name and for his sake, I pray. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. Can somebody tell me this morning what season of the year we're in? Christmas, Christmas season. Well, if we're in Christmas season, which I really thought was a time that we celebrate the birth of our Lord and our Savior, which we will be doing this month in a very special way, why, pray tell, would we read a scripture such as this? This does not talk about birth, does it? It speaks of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It just doesn't seem logical, does it? It doesn't seem like that a scripture like this would fit in to our Christmas celebration. But I want to suggest to you this morning that it not only fits into our celebration, but is, it is essential to our celebration. For you see, if Christ had not died on that cross, if he had not gone to that grave, if he had not risen again on the third day, then this celebration would be absolutely in vain. Thank God we have the knowledge this morning of the whole story of Christmas. You know, knowledge is power. And we have a power beyond our imagination. Oftentimes, we ask people this question. Well, what do you know? Now, there are a few folks who know a little about a lot of things. There are some who know a lot about few things. But there is something this morning that is of essence that every single one of us must know in this Christmas season. Not only us, but all of those with whom we will have the opportunity to celebrate this Christmas season. It is imperative today that you and I would have that knowledge in our mind, in our heart, in our lives, so that we might be able to share the whole story when it comes to the Christmas season and celebration. I want us to think about that knowledge this morning. No knowledge has so confounded the world than the knowledge of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. There are millions of people today who look with puzzled faces 
when we talk about a Savior who was born on Christmas morn in the stable there in the city of Bethlehem, who lived among us for the purpose of showing us how God would have us to live, and then who died for us, but who rose again in our stead just for us. You know, that's a simple knowledge, isn't it? There are so many knowledges in this world, so many things that are so complex, but how simple can it be? Paul said, I want to tell you all that I need to know and all that you need to know about this knowledge. Here it is. Christ died for our sin. Jesus was born. Christ died for our sin. Christ was buried for our sins, for your sins, for my sins, as well as the sins of the whole world. But the grave could not hold him, and today he lives on high. Simple and yet profound. No bit of knowledge in all of history has changed the lives of so many people than that bit of knowledge that you and I have in our heart and our life this morning. Just to know, just to know that there is a Savior who loves us and who cared for us and who died for us and who rose again in our stead is a wonderful, wonderful piece of knowledge. Just to be able to share that. Think about how that transformed lives from day unto day. Simple and yet profound. Simple and yet powerful. Simple this morning and yet so provocative in the lives of men because the Word of God says that when men hear this, they cannot escape the great judgment of this knowledge. I don't want us in this Christmas season to complicate the message of the gospel. God, I believe, would have us to simplify that which he says through the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to say to you, first of all this morning, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Simply say to others that a son was born, a Savior came, and he came just for you. Not only is it a simple message, but it's a stated message. I love the fact that we don't just read about the Christmas story in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you begin in Genesis 1, 1, and read through Revelation and the very last word, you know what you'll be reading about? You'll be reading about the fact that a Savior came. You'll be reading about the fact that God so loved this old world that he was willing to send his only begotten son into this world that you and I might have life. You'll be reading about the greatest Christmas gift that has ever been given to this world, and that is the gift of God's own son. You see, God said that to Abraham. God said that to David. God said that through the prophets. As he talked to those prophets, and he told them that those who lived in darkness, uh, not only for that century, but for all of the centuries, would have the wonderful opportunity of seeing such a great light that is found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible the Bible, God's Word, settles the matter, doesn't it? It states in so many ways, so many times, over and over and over again, that Christ died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And I love that phrase that Paul put there, according to the Scriptures. According to the plan of, that God has for this old sinful world. That's his plan. 
That's what he does. And I challenge you, I challenge you in this Christmas season, not only to keep it simple, but also to, to suggest and to share that it's not your plan, it's not my plan, it's not the world's plan, it's not the church's plan, but it's God's stated plan for the, for the redemption of mankind. And it all began in Bethlehem. One day when Jesus was born in the season that we today celebrate as Christmas. I want to suggest to you also that it is a satisfying bit of knowledge. It has been said that in the heart of every man, woman, boy, or girl in this, that's been born into this world, there is a spot. And in that spot is a longing for God. Aren't you grateful that God put that spot in your heart and in mine? Aren't you thankful this morning that because we had that longing, because we had that desire in our heart, we were willing to listen to someone some, one day who shared with us the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say to you, that which satisfied us is satisfying to the soul of every man and woman boy and girl who's ever been born. What better news, what more joyous news, what more thrilling news could come into our lives? What more could satisfy every need that we have as we look to him than to be reminded that God sent a Savior and that that Savior was willing to go all the way, even beyond this life to redeem and to rescue us and to receive us unto himself. You see, it's satisfying. There is something good. There is something good. There is something so soothing to think about when we think about the Christmas season and all that it imagines and brings to our imagination. I suggest to you, keep it simple this Christmas. When you share this season, don't muddle it up and cover it up, but just simply say to people, you know, there is a God who loves you. There is a God who loved you enough that he made it possible for this season to be. He sent his son into the world. He came, he lived, and he died. And according to the scriptures, he was raised again. Simple, simple. The simple message, the stated message, the Bible proves it. The word of God proves it. The, the history of the world proves it. And it will satisfy your soul. But also, I suggest to you that this is a sufficient message. This is all that the world needs to hear. Can you imagine a message so simple as this that would satisfy and solve every problem that every man, woman, boy, or girl could ever have in their life? A message, just a very few words, as Paul describes it there in verse 3 and 4, how he said, Christ died for our sins. Every sin that you and I would ever commit, as Max said, even the sins that we haven't committed already, Christ stands for those sins. He loved us enough to die for our sins. He loved us enough to go where God didn't want us to go. And that is to the depths of a devil's hell. He was buried. He went to that place. The Bible says he preached and delivered the spirits there in hell. Can you imagine God loves us enough so much that he would allow his perfect son to go into such a poisonous place 
as hell. But he did. And the good news is he didn't stay there. The good news today is he lives on high. And that's all you need to know. That he loves you. That he cares for you. That he's come for you. That he claims you. And that he can complete you in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have a wonderful opportunity this Christmas season. You and I who sit here this morning know this, don't we? For the very most part of us, every one of us has accepted this into our heart and into our life. But we have a wonderful opportunity. No better time in all of the year than to remind people of the knowledge of the story of Christmas. You see, knowledge is power. Knowledge, that knowledge, can make the difference in the eternity of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in all of the Scripture. Paul said, if we don't have that knowledge, all that we, all that we can, can know is but in vain. I want to ask you, to join with the great Apostle Paul in this Christmas season. Will you resolve to do this? To share with those with whom you come in contact the knowledge that you have about Jesus. Paul said it in the personal sense. He said, I want to share what I know. I want to tell you what I know. I want to tell you what has been confirmed to me before God, that I have a Savior, and you have a Savior, and the world has a Savior, who came, who died, who was buried, but who rose again, who lives on high, who longs for your soul and for your eternal security. Will you join with him this Christmas season? It's just simple knowledge. You don't have to know how to preach a sermon. You don't even have to know how to sing a song to share that knowledge. God has given you a voice. And God will give you opportunity day after day after day for the single purpose of sharing what you know about Jesus. Let me ask you something this morning. When it comes to Jesus, when it comes to Christmas, what do you know this morning? Do you know him personally? Can you personally say, I know, and I share with you out of my own experience that Christ loved you enough that he would come to earth, that he would die on the cross, that he would go to the grave, to the depth of hell itself, and that he would rise again on the third day. If you don't know that this morning, if you're not convinced of that in your heart, I invite you in our time of invitation to come and get in this altar and ask God to confirm that. You see, preachers can explain it. Sunday school teachers can teach it. But only God can explain it to the fullness of its reality in your heart, in your life. And he'll do that by the Holy Spirit of God this morning. I suspect that most of us already know that. I suspect that most of us have already accepted that in our hearts. And so the challenge for us who do know is not to keep it to ourselves, but to share the knowledge that will change a world for the glory of Christ. Father, we thank you this morning that we have the opportunity to come and to rethink the knowledge that we already have about Christ. Lord, as we come to this Christmas season, I pray that you'll help us to know that it's not just about a baby being born in a manger in Bethlehem, but it's about a Christ who came, who died, 
who went into the depths of hell itself and who was, rose again on the third day. The complete story of the gospel. But Lord, even more so, the hope of our world. For if we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are all men most miserable. You see, Father, it's an eternal hope, and we realize that. And we want others to realize that. So guide us, give us the words to say, the way to just express this simple knowledge to a lost and dying world who needs it so desperately. And we'll praise you for every opportunity. We'll thank you for every chance that we get. Lord, to just share the simple knowledge of Christmas. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. We're going to stand together and ask Kenneth to come in a moment and lead us in our hymn of invitation. I pray this morning that you will resolve right here as we begin the Christmas season to share as often as you can the good news of the Christmas story. Not just that Jesus was born, 